Well, what do you think? You think that it'll require a lot of rework to bring it to within the new specifications? It's going to take some work to get the damaged sections repaired, but overall, I don't think it's as bad as it looks. Once we get some of the loose material tested, we'll have a better idea as to the cost to repair this. We'll both get our air bandage from blower and make preparations to get inside. You mean the job is dangerous? It doesn't look dangerous enough to require an air blower. Every confined entry job can be dangerous. You never really know what you can run into. People are injured or even killed every year because they don't take the proper safety precautions. Confined entries are classified by a number of agencies as to the danger potential. This particular job will only require an air ventilation blower and standard testing gear. I tell you what, I got a safety video downstairs in the truck. It's good. It has a lot of useful information on it. Remind me to give you a copy of it before we leave. Most confined workspaces are not designed for workers to enter and work in them on a routine basis. They're designed to store a product, enclose materials and processes, or transport products or substances. Therefore, the occasional entry for inspection, maintenance, cleanup, or similar tasks is often difficult and dangerous due to chemical or physical hazards within the space. Openings can be small in size and difficult to move through easily. However, in some cases, openings may be very large. For example, open-top spaces such as pits, degreasers, excavations, and ship's holds. Access to these spaces may require the use of ladders, hoists, or other devices, and escape may be very difficult in an emergency. In the past several years, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, the American National Standards Institute, and a growing number of states have developed standards and regulations that pertain to almost every type of confined workspace entry. While the standards and regulations may vary slightly from one agency to another, their basic content will each include the following parameters. The definition of a confined workspace the requirements for both initial and recurrent personnel training, and the various classes of confined workspaces and their individual requirements for identification and permit to enter. Because these standards and regulations are under constant revision, it is highly recommended that current information regarding any confined workspace entry be obtained by first contacting your local federal and state OSHA offices. Portable air ventilation blowers are not generally utilized for a confined workspace entry that requires a written permit. Work in these types of confined spaces will usually require the use of a self-contained breathing apparatus, an approved safety belt and lifeline, and other specialized equipment. In addition, a designated person is usually assigned to remain outside of the confined workspace and be in constant contact with the workers inside. The standby person has no other duty but to react in an emergency situation. This program will only depict general portable air ventilation blowers being utilized for confined workspace entries where allowed by existing federal OSHA regulations. Before utilizing the blower, visually inspect for loose, damaged, or worn parts. Determine that controls work freely. All safety devices are operative and that information decals are readable. It is essential that the blower and all related accessories are in good mechanical condition before you attempt to use them. Blowers provide fresh air into a confined workspace by attaching various types of duct to the fan outlet. Many blowers are designed to remove harmful gases from a confined workspace by attaching a duct to the fan inlet. However, since this evacuation configuration also creates a suction force, a duct used for this purpose must be reinforced to prevent its collapse. To realize usable flow rates, the minimum safe duct diameter is 8 inches. 
and since friction between the duct and moving air directly affects flow rates, the maximum safe duct length is 25 feet. Always properly secure ducts to blowers with the provided tension straps or other suitable means. Position the blower on solid firm footing where movement due to vibration can be minimized. Gasoline powered blowers produce a poisonous gas, carbon monoxide. The possibility of contaminated air being introduced into the confined workspace through the fan inlet can be minimized by placing the exhaust muffler outlet downwind from the relative wind direction. Power connections for electrically powered blowers should comply with applicable National Electrical Code and OSHA regulations. The proper use of a ground fault circuit interrupter, or GFCI, will increase safety on all job sites, especially those involving water. Exercise extreme caution when coupling a direct current powered blower to a battery source. Always allow for proper ventilation. Hydrogen gas created by the battery can ignite and cause an explosion. The possibility of an explosion brings up an important safety reminder. Unless clearly marked, no general blower is specifically designed to operate in a combustible atmosphere. Likewise, unless clearly marked, no general blower is designed to transport combustible or flammable gases. Under certain conditions, where flammable gases or vapors have displaced the oxygen level but are still too rich to burn, forced ventilation by the blower may dilute them until these gases or vapors are within their explosive range. Improper job applications for blowers can produce a resulting explosion and serious injury. Because air may not flow in and out of a confined workspace freely due to design considerations, the atmosphere inside can be very different from the outside. Deadly gases may be trapped inside, particularly if the space is used to store or process chemical or organic substances that decompose. There may not be adequate oxygen inside the confined workspace to support life, or the atmosphere could be so oxygen rich that it is likely to increase the chance of an explosion if an ignition source is present. There are several methods for ventilating a confined workspace. The exact method and equipment selected are dependent upon the following factors. The size of the confined workspace. The types of gases to be removed or exhausted. And the source of makeup air. Regulations usually require the testing of a confined workspace for harmful gas contamination prior to entry. Always assume that a confined workspace is contaminated. Do not enter any confined workspace until it has been proven safe for work personnel, from blower performance and accurate data from the testing equipment. The most effective position for the duct outlet is with the ventilating air being directed to an end wall. This arrangement provides for more even air distribution and will more effectively eliminate spaces in the corners where harmful gases can accumulate. Take a few minutes to read the appropriate operator's manual for the blower. It contains additional information that will give you a better understanding of the operation of the blower and the accepted procedures for its use. Keep it handy for quick reference. An informed, knowledgeable operator works with more confidence in himself and in the machine. He'll work with greater safety and be far more productive on the job site. Be aware of potential safety-related problems and their implications on the job site. Safety pays dividends. Work smart. And remember that safety is everybody's job and responsibility. This program is intended to promote safety and efficiency with general portable air ventilation blowers. No warranty, guarantee, or representation is made by the manufacturer and or his authorized agent as to the absolute correctness and or sufficiency of any information or statement. This program is not intended to substitute for an operator's manual. Before attempting to utilize the blower, read the appropriate operator's manual and other materials supplied by the manufacturer to familiarize each operator with correct operating procedures. Proper levels of operator experience, skill, and common sense are essential for the safe and efficient operation of the blower.